The following program is a special presentation of the Big Ten Network, produced in association with Michigan State University. I'm Jim Peck. Welcome to MSU Today. Here's what's coming right now. Going in, a lot of the way we uh, develop throughout the season is uh, what happens right now. If you go along Circle Drive, there are places where there are grouping of four or five buildings that would transport you back to anywhere between 1890 and 1910. We got a phone call and one thing led to another and we're staying next to Jay Leno the next day. This is a cool concept. These guys get to work on the race cars instead of just looking at books. Exactly. When fall is in the air, there's nothing like football. And during football season, there's nothing like the MSU marching band. And every year it starts the same. The freshmen arrive and the veterans help show the way. Just uh, throw them into the water and see how they do. That it's mentoring, it's modeling, it's leading by example. What if you don't have a local address? Yeah. 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 I'm just a little homeless, not, not completely. <laughs> just a little Where are you going to I don't know. See, we thought people were going to be responsible this year. <laughs> this is preseason, it's the time where the band basically gets ready. For the fall. Lunch is at Shaw. Shaw Everybody. for meals. Shaw is where we eat today? It's not a brody, what the schedule says. Okay. It's at Shaw. Shaw. Everything's new. They're nervous. They're crazy excited. It's just all these emotions at once. Uniforms Whoa, are tonight uniforms. at 10. They get checked in in the morning. They move into the dorms that day. And then they come and work for the rest of the week. You moving in this morning? Uh, yeah. OK, then. Play on it. Good luck. Okay. And see you. Uh, you know, be there by 1.30. OK. Man, ready? Run. Dress, it's that building of this year's team, and it's a family mentality. <laughs> oh. We're bonding. Oh, my kidney's in my mouth. <laughs> We're usually here from between 8 and 9 in the morning and uh, till about, I don't know, 8 or 9 at night. We're going to walk this way. <laughs> it's pretty intense, and it's, it's hard physically. Two boys, drop and give me half. Oh. So we run twice a day. Get up, get up, get up. We're marching all day, high step. And up straight, pull that gut in. Pull it in. A lot of the way we uh, develop throughout the season is uh, what happens right now. Friday, the drum line arrives. They've been working from you know nine to nine every day. Um. They do their own thing for a lot of the time, just to get ready with all of their business they do. Well, right now we're training the freshmen. The back of the heel touches on the beat. Get a nice tall neck, stand up, reach tall. Get the freshmen ready for when the veterans come. The veterans come in this afternoon. But there's not much to see yet. Yeah. It's just sort of fundamentals. Hit. Uh, we're basically just getting all our fundamentals down before we start learning the real stuff. Everybody stretches. No running. They like it. They like it. Disco Sparty! It's kind of, I mean, it's a warm up for the legs. We stretch, but then it's also our own little hype things. Like, we get excited about Sparty. We get excited about weird stuff, actually. <laughs> All right, that better be on TV. Actually, part of the reason I even stayed in band after high school and into college was because I wanted to make the band here. Cheat and what? It's, it's a, a lot of hard work. I mean, to even get into the band, you have to go, if you're new, you have to go through two rounds of auditioning. Oh, 
placed in right in the middle of the band last year, so hopefully in these auditions I do a bit better. Well, for most people it's a pretty exciting thing. And then there's the difficult reality in our, in our system that some people don't make the block. Uh, I was really nervous. I actually was an alternate my first year and it was, it was terrible. One of my least favorite um, responsibilities. At the same token, it is the reason the band is as good as it is. Because there's competition from within to be in the most coveted spot. <laughs> Yeah, let me show you. So that means I get to play uh, the E flat cornet instead of this thing. So there's only eight people that do that, so that's pretty high honor, so I'm pumped. Oh man, I'm tired. Pretend that nobody's watching me. I'm not I'm not wired up, not on TV. Bring it in, let's go! This is obviously the beginning of the freshman dress rehearsal. You now tonight we kind of become one class and it's a tradition that's that's gone back uh, for a long time at Michigan State. This is my third year as a leader in this band and I just want to tell you guys that I'm very proud of you. It makes the freshman class feel like, man, I, they re I really feel like a part of this band. I've worked hard, I've earned it, and I love these guys. That's that's the overwhelming feeling. This is going to be a test of what you've learned during preseason. No talking from this point forward. Freshman dresses, it's just, it's a test of what you've learned all preseason. So you're just doing the same things that you've done all preseason. March in the series. playing the fight song, that kind of stuff, and it's it's an intense environment. Up and down and slash! This is your school! But it's not a, a negative environment. So if you back up, the whole band has to back up. Keep at the band. It's got a long ways to go, but you're on the plan. Cops are there for safety. And we're using the least busiest road on campus. I mean, more important is just becoming part of the band and the sense of belonging that you really get that really begins tonight. The MSU campus has grown through the decades. The buildings, tangible examples of the passage of time, the connective tissue of centuries. Michigan State is unusual in that from its earliest years it began to talk about the campus as a park and valued the, um, the actual geography and the plants uh, as part of their agricultural heritage. So the campus has always been seen as a public resource. It's used even today for study. It might be easier to think of campus, this whole campus, as your house with a really big yard. All the bricks and mortar, every detail has to be cared for every day of the year and through the generations. So if you were going to add on to your home, what would you add? How would you do it? MSU is a little like that. It reflects what was, is, and hopefully will be going on in society. The campus is a reflection of, it's a reflection of a society, but also, as President Hannah said, it is meant to be a demonstration model. So as, as population changes, as we become more urban, uh, the challenge is not to preserve this as a bucolic museum, but to make it be a working, living in, uh, environment, a living educational environment. If you go along Circle Drive, there are places where there are a grouping of four or five buildings that would transport you back to anywhere between 1890 and 1910 if you wanted to experience that. And yet you can walk on other parts of campus and feel as though you're in the 1960s and other parts that really lead you into the future. And that's the big challenge. So in making the decision to add to the stadium, for example, which was a, a, a radical decision, um, the idea was also to add to a big building and, and make it multidimensional in its usefulness. And that it actually works as a fairly unique for a school our size to have the stadium still actually be on the campus, which makes it much more part of the whole environment. And then we built um, biomedical physical sciences, which uh, is now becoming um, more 
less, not less new looking, but more a part of the campus as the trees grow and as art is placed around it because we have a commitment to that for all new building. And then in the future, the, the art museum. The art museum is coming. The lonely space that's just sort of hanging out on the edge of campus is going to be anything but lonely when the Broad Art Museum casts its edgy shadow, when it cracks open its doors and reveals the treasures inside, which can but hope to rival the audacious design of their home. We have to remember that the buildings that are memorable, that people travel around the world to see, um, the Duomo, the cathedral in Florence, is memorable because it is uh, of it, the texture of its outside um, st stone in green, green and white or green and beige. Uh, this is going to be remarkable because of its use of glass and metal and other materials. It will be, by design, iconic. It will be transformational. I don't know if you heard it, but that's the term that our president has used, and that was the challenge, was to find a firm um, that was willing to create a building that you could think of as our largest sculpture on campus, as the home for the university's art collection, as a place that bridges between the community and the campus, as a place for children, students, uh, anyone of any age to come and learn about the arts, the visual arts. One look, one single glance and you know it stands out. We want a design that's challenging, and it will be definitely different from its neighbors. But its neighbors will understand. They'll get used to the new family next door, just as they have through the years. And that's, again, something you feel on this campus that you don't feel elsewhere, that there's a commitment to making the campus work. There are some cities in the U.S. that feel, or in the world that feel that way, and there are others that feel disjointed. And here there's a sense that the people who are doing the work, that are mowing the lawns or doing whatever else needs to be done, are all contributing to making this, this organism thrive. The buildings, the landscape, all of it comes together and has to come together to make Michigan State University a real community, not just a bunch of buildings. It's the interplay of the buildings and the, and the green space that makes our campus wonderful. Uh, and the fact that um, you can find places that people are interested in inhabiting, sitting in, walking through, but don't even have names. And yet they're places that people go to. The place behind the administration building where the ducks are is not named. Uh, but everyone knows if you say, I'll meet you at the Ducks, that that's where you need to go. Uh, and, and that's what people learn when they're on the campus, is that it's, it's neat, there are people are not throwing trash, and yet it's not antiseptic, it's a living, breathing organism. And hopefully that's a role model that people will keep with them when they move back to, they leave school and they move into building and being a part of other communities. Through the years, bricks and mortar become buildings buildings become icons, and icons become transformational. But at the heart of it is Michigan State. And because all of this is Michigan State, these bricks and mortar, this glass and steel, all of it, all of it feels like home, and always will. Words that ring as true today as ever. Words from a man whose shadow still crosses this campus words that lifted the reputation of our university and inspired people to live up to it. They are the words of John A. Hanna, president of Michigan State University from 1941 to 1969, a time when MSU and America saw everything from World War II to Vietnam, from Bing Crosby to the Beatles, a man who guided this university as we grew from 6,000 to almost 40,000 students. A man whose favorite words might just have been, only people are important. Yes, words from a man whose shadow still crosses this campus, and always will. Do you think of your homework in terms of chapters and lectures? It might be time to start thinking about it in terms of 0 to 60 and miles per hour. It's, uh, it's a really good learning experience. You won't you know, get this hands-on work. It's going to be a lot of people working, working on assembly or fabrication. I was hooked instantly. Uh, we peaked in 2003 at third place out of 120 teams. Formula Racing at Michigan State is uh, MSU's entry into the Formula SAE student design competition.
Today we are uh, right at the, uh, the end final stages of manufacturing Car 51, our 2008 Formula SAE car. A lot of uh, fit and finish work, a lot of making sure things don't hit other things, things that you maybe overlook. Do you have that plumbing line all figured out? Yeah, I can just go get a new one. NPT valve. You push this down and you put a polyurethane hose in here. You know, it's all done by students in-house, the whole program, including not only just the car, but everything from the public relations aspects down to the funding is all done uh, by our team. So they got to be stiff, so the car is uh, stiff, but they also have to be loose, so uh, there's not too much friction in the, in the bearings. This project uh, requires a budget of uh, nearly half a million dollars. It was really interesting, so I started coming to the meetings, you know, in the fall, and and got really involved with it. And I'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. I'm finding the edge, what's called an edge finder. We were working right now, you know, seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day, on top of going to class or, or working. Right. Start running through, when we actually get the engine there, running through shifts. You have to make sure that everything's in its place and that everything's gonna be nice and secure and safe for when we actually do drive it. And this is just a uh, standard Eighth inch NPT push fitting. Everything is put together at the end, uh, and uh, and then the car runs. Hopefully, at that point, this car is unlike any other vehicle that you've ever driven. You're basically, sitting an inch and a half off the ground, strapped into something that can go zero to sixty in you know three seconds. So you're talking Ferrari-like performance. Mm -hmm. People that I talk to are just like are blown away. They're like, wow. The, the radius of this, this tool right here, then the uh, center of this cowl will be exactly ha um, right in the center of this edge of this, um, the part that I'm machining. It really uh, comes down to, I, I would say, passion. You know, I mean, the, uh, an interest in the subject and then the willingness uh, and excitement to put in the amount of time that it requires. Just coming out here every week and, you know, just getting your hands dirty and building a race car from ground up, you know, for an entire year is just an amazing experience. And we test all the way up until competition, which is uh, usually the second week of May, the third week of May, somewhere around there. And then um, from then on, we start the process over again. So while we're racing our last year car in competition, we're actually designing the next year's car. Yeah, it was wild. I mean, it was literally, I think Adam mentioned, 24 hours. He, he got a phone call and one thing led to another, and we're staying next to Jay Leno the next day. If you're an old guy like me and you want to help out some young kids... Yeah, well, maybe Jay would like to take a look at this sort of project. This is a cool concept. These guys get to work on race cars instead of just looking at book. Exactly. So we contacted uh, this gentleman who knew him, and he proposed the idea to Jay, and within 24 hours, Jay had invited us to go do a shoot for his series, Jay Leno's Garage. This is a very exciting project. I'm with a bunch of guys from the uh, Michigan State uh, College of Engineering. It was an incredible experience. And they were doing five shoots for the, for the Jay Leno's Garage series. I was blown away. Yeah, I didn't get to meet Jay Leno. He walked into his garage, and there was the man himself standing there. Everything you read about Jay on the internet or uh, in magazines, you say that he's a really nice guy. And this is homework. I had to read Wuthering Heights. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is homework. But he saw us walk in, and he, he, he stopped everything. He's like, you know, hey, guys, how you doing? Uh, you know, go on over here to my kitchen. He has a little kitchen basically in the side of the garage, in the corner of the garage. Oh, go grab yourself some pizza. Go. It was a good experience for the team and I really wish I was there. He liked the fact that we're just a bunch of college guys that are doing it purely for the love of the, of the racing, the love of the challenge of building a car from the ground up. I don't remember getting a chance to do anything like this. This no, is this, pretty cool. It's just amazing, you know, like he, Jay Leno's accomplished so much in his life and then he looks down and he sees us doing something nice and you know, compliments on us doing something that he likes to do and that he's interested in. So it's really, it's a good feeling to know like someone that, you know, that well off likes something that we do. So it's he was very, very, uh, very um, adamant about taking special time out of his day to take us around, explain a little bit about his collection, about what he finds interesting about cars, what he finds the most rewarding about having a collection like that. What do you notice, Bernard? Well, how much leeway do you have in, in design of this car? Like His personal car? mechanic that we had, that had kind of been taking us around as well, really explained to us, he said, you know, you guys are pretty lucky. He would never from usually do this the, for any other uh, company or any other people, but he walked around with us for a couple hours and was really, you know, one-on-one -on -one with us. How big a motor are you running? 600 cc's. He huh? definitely got a kick out of it, especially we started it up for him. And now, crusty old Barney Oldfield Bernard wants to hear this thing run. <laughs> If 
thought it was definitely a lot more than any kind of go-kart. It's a full-blown race car, and they, they knew it off the bat. So check it out. Go to Michigan State Formula Racing Team, right? Yes, sir. Check it out. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jay. Just out for really learning the ropes of engineering and learning how things in the real world work with designing a race car. When I graduate, I'd like to have some, something either race-oriented or automotive-oriented and um, just you know, stay in the, in the car world and keep designing and doing what I'm doing right now but you know, getting paid for it, obviously. We leave you along the Red Cedar River, spilling over its banks from the heavy rains.